welcome Emilio Estefan. Oh my God, what an introduction. It feels like family here. <laughs> I feel like family yeah, because I, I you're know. so you and you've done so much. And I want people to understand that everything starts with music, right? Everything starts with music. But you know, still, I still believe in all glory, I was said, you're still like a kid. <laughs> and you know, so, I mean, you wake up in the morning full of life and you know, sometimes I wish people had my energy because you know, it's so beautiful. When you have 12 notes and you have to write a new melody and create new the rhythms, and I do every single day, I keep writing music and everything. And I think the minute you lose that, you lose everything and you know, and they, I'm so happy that, you know, we create the whole Miami sound, but you know, we stay here because this is the city we love. I mean, we love and we're so proud the way that Miami's projected global now is uh, see, unbelievable. The, we live unbelievable times. When did you move to South Florida? I moved to South Florida when I was 15 years old and 70 years old. That's talking about 45 years ago. And you started and you had a vision and look where you are now. You've created what you have from the ground up. You have the heart for what you do and you continue to. You should be sailing the seven seas, but you continue to work <laughs> and I, you're a kid at heart. I, I understand because I kind of refuse to get old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, age is just a matter. But I think we went through so much when we came, you know, leaving my family in Cuba and everything. And it was a, my life changed in, in a flight to Spain. I left Cuba to Spain when I was uh, 14 years old. I became a man. And I said, you have two choices in life. Being positive, be appreciative, and be happy. It worked for me in a big way. And more than anything else, to be thankful that we live in freedom, that we live in the best country in the whole world. And we, take, we don't take this for granted. We, every day we say thank you to the United States because we have that opportunity that dreams can come true. I mean, when I came here, when I went to Spain, I became almost homeless. I have to play the accordion for, for tea because people in Miami didn't have a lot of money to send us money. So, I mean, we used to go to a church for food and then, you know, something. Saturday and Sunday was closed. But I found a place that they used to play the accordion. And I used to go outside at night to listen to the guy play the accordion. So one day I told my dad, let me go and talk to them to see, let me play the accordion just for food. Because, you know, music was oh. what uh, makes me happy. I mean, being a kid. That's where it all started, huh? It all started. And then I moved to Miami and I, I got so lucky to, you know, be with the Bacardi family that I knew from Cuba. And then they used to hire me to go and play in weekends. And then I play all the Cuban music. People start crying. I didn't know why they're crying because, you know, it was a whole nostalgia about their own country. And, you know, something. They helped me a lot. And I always say thankful to them. I worked for Bacardi many years. And I, that's uh, the, how Miami Latin boys started, you know, playing weddings, bar mitzvah. We play everything <laughs> for a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> hundred bucks went a long way back then, Ooh, right? You better believe it. <laughs> when I think of Emilio, I think of the businessman, the icon, but then instruments. What's your favorite instrument? I like percussion. I mean, I play I, the accordion. I made my, my first money I made, I was with the accordion. But percussion brings that, I think, unite people. It's rhythm, you know. Sometimes people move with rhythm, and I see people get happy right away, and I think that's it. That's what I like, percussion. Talk to me a little bit about your family life. You married Gloria, fabulous woman, great heart. She's my idol. I think you know that. I know that. <laughs> I love, love her too. because she's so genuine. I've been blessed. Been blessed, I married the person that I love. I respect her as a woman, as a Latino woman, as an American woman, as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter. I see her to a lot of the roles, and she always inspired me to respect that. It's nothing better with, well, let me tell you, when you have a wife that you, you love her, like I love Gloria, the way that I, that I respect to her, including when she went to an accident. Yeah. And it was the hardest time, and she never complained. She always said, thanks God that happened to me. She did the comeback was an amazing, amazing thing because it proved me that, you know, in life you have to be positive. We had the same philosophy about everything we wanted to do, the same principles, the same appreciation for this incredible country and our fans and the people that helped us. I mean, many people ask, why you didn't leave Miami? Why should I leave Miami? This is home for me. People help us, you know. Oh, we need you here. We need no, you I, here. No, I want to go. <laughs> believe me, I want to stay here I mean, the, for the rest of my life. And you know something? Not only that, it's a, it makes me so happy. The love, I mean, Celia Cruz told, told me one day, you can sell records, but you cannot buy love. Absolutely. You know something? People are so nice to us. I mean, I cannot tell you the amount of love when people, even the other day I stopped a car, somebody came to my car to give me a hug. I said, I give, have to give you a hug. I never have the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> and you know something? That's a beautiful thing. It is, and I and it draws me back to when Las Damas en Blanco, yeah. here on 8th Street. I want to say maybe 15 years ago, 14, yeah. 15 yeah. years ago, I was, you was a there. young officer. You was there. I was there, <laughs> remember. And it was an experience for me, and it was an experience to see how loved you and Gloria are. And from then on, I always knew who you were, 
But that's when I really got to know all of you and how Miami, the reception that Miami had, the amazing. outpour of love. Amazing. Esto comprueba que somos un solo pueblo de muchas nacionalidades, de muchos colores, de muchas raíces, pero un pueblo que lo une, el amor a la libertad. I mean, because when I saw the whole thing that was happening in Cuba, how there was a waiting woman just for, to work with the flower, dressed in white, bringing hope for, you know, some of their families, some husband was in jail. Me and Gloria said, this cannot happen. The world and you did it within, know. how many days did you plan a that? A week and a half. And we got uh, over 200,000 people walking on this AS3. That was an amazing, amazing incredible. day to be in the history of Miami because people respond about human rights, about freedom. And you know, what I love about that, and I always say Miami is a city that is a role model because I mean, I saw every nationality from every country Absolutely. in the world with the flag supporting the Cuban people. It was amazing. I was expected probably 20,000 people. And you know, I, I went to the city of Miami, I said, I need help. And yeah, yes. I said, I don't, want to, I don't want you to spend any money. I will cover everything, but I need help because you know, something to organize something like this in such a short time and everybody came through. All the police department was so good for us and they, they kept everybody going and they secure. I have a lot of respect what you guys do because you know something realistic, I mean, I see that they put their life in, in, in every day. When they go out, they don't know what is gonna happen. And with people sometimes say, well, they take it for granted, but you know, we really appreciate the kind of work the city of Miami does. You don't do this by yourself. People support you and help you. And it's all the fans and people that help you, especially in the city. I mean, one thing that we miss is doing the Feed a Friend, that we feed over 3,000 people in Thanksgiving, but now with COVID, next year we're going to be getting ready to... And I'm going to be there with my apron on and my hairnet. Uh, you I always went be there. there. You yeah, always I'm, went I'm there. going to be there. But you know something, next year we're going to do it back with, because COVID, we have to stop everything. And then when COVID came in, we create, we create something I call Oprah. I say, Oprah, I need help. And she said, as long as I don't have to leave out of my house, I want you to and see a whole special I want to do. And we got Celine Dion. Black IP, Maluma, Stevie Wonder, Gloria, Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, Emily, David Foster, Carol King. And we streamed that to the global, all over the world, and we hit a billion point five, and they grossed over $500 million to doctors and nurses. So, you know, I was so happy that we did that because, you know, realistic. Oh. I mean, the money comes straight to hospitals and our university, but we're able to thank all the doctors and nurses in such a tough time that they, that we don't a lot, so the years we don't a lot of things. I remember Andrew, we did a, one of the biggest uh, concerts uh, gross in the history of the, it was done here in Miami, in Joe Robbie Stadium. That was wow. a long time ago. 1992. 92. Yes, that was huge. I think, you know, the love that we have for Miami is, uh, you know, Miami is an incredible city that, that a lot of people uh, come from all over the world. Now, the good thing about, I call it Miami Sound, when I started, people thought I was crazy because they said, you know, why you want to call it so local? I said, no, it's going to be only one time the Cuban kids as an Im immigrate to this country. They're going to have a sound from Cuba, but they're going to grow up with the Miami. I mean, and listen to Motown, the Beatles, you know, uh, the Bee Gees. I mean, all that. And we combined that, all that element without forgetting where we came from. But I, we was coming to a new country and we was bringing something new to tell you. That was a hard thing to do because, you know, something I remember going to Sony and tell that when we play Dr. B, I say, that would never Dr. work. Dr. B. Dr. B. Dr. B. Dr. B. And you know something? They didn't want to put any money. So we went into all the record pools and they start playing all of a sudden, number one in Holland, number one in Paris, number one in, the, in, in England, and they became huge. They were excited. We have a big hit. We go to Holland to perform. We also have Dr. B and Anita Men, only two English songs. People went crazy. They wanted, we want more. And I said, Gloria, we should play the conga, Cuban conga. I said, that's a good idea. They don't speak Spanish, they don't speak English anyway. Let's do it. And we play the Cuban conga. We start playing the conga. People go crazy, totally crazy. And when the, we finish, I said, I, I think that, you know, when I start writing maybe a, a song called Conga, we talk to the drummer. And he started he started doing the conga. When they playing, they finish. I mean, they finish. And Gloria let her the song. She gives some ideas about the arrangement. I came to Miami. We record the song. Time to go to New York. Seven times I went, they, they never let me even come into the building. Really? Finally, after seven times. The guy, I go, sir, I say, my God, you should say with Dr. Bean, incredible. I said, this is a new song. And when I play, the guy looks at me, you, you must be crazy. Do you think say, Y100 or C100 is going to play this kind of music? That will never happen. Take the tumbao out, take the drums, trade the horns. I said, Marab, I think you should be singing instead of a girl, you should be singing. I said, I'm not a singer. I'm a producer, a musician, but I'm not a singer. And he said, and by the way, I think you have to change your last name. I say, I don't want to take the piano out. I don't want to take the horns out. I don't want to change my last name. And you know, one thing that made a mistake, he said, you should go back to your country then. And I say, well, you like it or not, this is what America's going to look like. 
<laughs> and you know, and the guy said, well, good luck. So we went out, me and Gloria said, well, what, what are we going to do? We went back to the record pools. The record pools play a big role. It's like internet now. So you go to them, they start playing, number one in, in, in London, number one in wow. England, number one in, in Holland, in the Germany, and then they go, or then come to the States, and Conga became in, it, it's such a big hit. And also, didn't it make it to the world record, yeah. the biggest conga line in Calle Ocho? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Calle Ocho has been famous. I was there. Yeah. I was part of it. I was part of history. <laughs> I remember that. Before, I think there was in Milwaukee. So one of the players, they got like, the records with conga. I said, we had to do it in Calle Ocho. Okay. We got so many millions of people sing, dancing to conga. You're quite the businessman. I think it all started when you started playing the accordion, huh? Well, the accordion, the real truth about the accordion, I want to tell you. You're asking me questions because you know me. That's the problem. <laughs> But the problem is, you know, I wanted to get an instrument that, you know, you know, I never, never learned in music. Even I've been nominated 42 times for Grammys. I, I won a lot of Grammys. I mean, music made my whole life a big difference. I convinced my uncle to buy me an accordion. When I got home, my, my aunt told me, because my mom was in Cuba, and I said, you got that? I said, yeah, I'm going to I, I gonna, I, I gonna pay. Don't worry about it. It's $177. How are we going to pay for that, you know? She was there with 14 kids. 14? And 14 of my wow. cousins was you know, escaping from the military age in Cuba. And then I booked myself to play the accordion at night, especially weekend, in an Italian restaurant. And they, they didn't pay me, they just paid me the tips. I always tell this story because people think that you get to a place because you're lucky. It's not lucky, it's work. No, from and the ground I, up. And in the long run, you have to tell this story because in the long run, me and Gloria, what is important is to leave a beautiful legacy about dreams, about when you live in a free country, you can achieve everything. And that in order to, to make it, any, it doesn't matter what you do. You still have to work hard and you know, put 100% of yourself. Every time I do something, I go 100% to be sure that everything has to be the, the best way that I can do it. And it feels good. It feels good that you know something that when you do something, you feel rewarded when you listen to the music or you do anything else. That's very important. And you have a beautiful family, your son, your daughter. They're both great musicians. My God, they are incredible. My, my daughter, so you got a big concert, and she's all incredible. I think she's better than me and Gloria, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and and Ayi has it's the, a different style. And Ayi has the drive-in that, you know, the, he's so happy with the drive-in in downtown. And I see him with the pizza and the Coca-Cola. So, I mean, they, they take the soft drinks everywhere. I mean, and he said, Dad, I'm, I'm doing well with this. You know what I, I ask him? Are you happy? Are you happy? That makes me happy. 100%. And that's the way life should be. That's why you're so who you are, because you you always have that smile on your face. Yeah. I, I, let me tell you, I see a lot of the rich people and famous people, they don't enjoy everything. I still enjoy when I, I go to a restaurant and they give me just a soft drink. I say, well, I'm so happy that, you know, that I can do this. <laughs> you made my dream come true by actually interviewing you. I do know a little bit about you, but there are a lot of people that don't know how it all began here in South Florida and the love that you have for South Florida. Thank you for sharing the history with us, the family that you have created and the love that you have given all of us in South Florida and the rest of the world. Thank you. No, thank you so much. For me, I mean, it's a pleasure, especially talking to you because I feel that you only have a couple of months, sometimes uh, moments that you can express the gratitude that we have about this incredible city. Anywhere we go, we represent a beautiful city, multi-ethnic that come, we come from all over the world and we feel all Miamian. So we feel that, you know, this is a beautiful city that is a role model to a lot of people because we get along with the Jewish community, the Italian community, the gay community. All of us get together as, as a one celebration that is called Miami. Many years will happen, uh, we'll go and everything, but what is important in life is that, you know, to leave a beautiful legacy about recognition, love, appreciation. In the long run, it's the only thing you leave behind. You don't leave money, you don't leave anything, whatever you're going to do, but you know, everything that you do is, you know, the music and the song of the things and the restaurant that we don't, hotels, and I, we made a promise that whatever money we make, we put it back in Florida, especially in Miami. Thank and we, you. And we don't die because, you know, this is home. This is totally, totally home. Thank you Thank so you for much. coming. We love you. And thank love you to you all too. the Miami people, you know, to the, everything you guys do. We're so thankful. So we appreciate it. We don't take it for granted. We love you.